case anyone's ever been curious as to why a little tiny piece of mesh from Nick costs so much. Every single rotation of the fuse is done by hand. Build specs are 31 gauge Cantal Core, 38 gauge N80 Stagger Fuse. I've done several different variations of this, ranging from 29 gauge N80 to 31 gauge Cantal, 36 gauge Fuse, 40 gauge Fuse. And um, I think that 38 is actually the, the, the best gauge for this. And I say that because the whole intent of this build is to be wide. Wide like a section of mesh, but just simply outperform it in every way. And um, I did a 3140 the other day for a buddy. And it it wasn't as wide it wasn't nearly as wide so I actually might just send him a replacement to try out and play around with this is definitely not a build you want to do at the end of a day when your hands are tired from doing all sorts of other builds because the hand that holds the spool has virtually zero tension on it whatsoever and I know by the end of the day when I build all day that dexterity is not really there um, I end up holding stuff way too tightly so I have to have a nice soft touch so that you don't collapse everything Sorry. I had one of these in my profile. One of my local buddies needed a needed an RDA because his uh, just got smashed to bits. So. I hooked him up with mine, but he was running it on an Aegis Legend, so we wanted to get the resistance up a little more than what these normally ring in at, so I actually did a Tricore Staggered N80 2736. Um, I did just a small build, I think it was 4 wrap on a 4 mil single. And that thing absolutely chucks. I'm not trying to discourage anybody from trying this if they wanted to try it, but I I will say there are other builds resistance wise that work just as well in the in the profile or a mesh style deck. He drips on his, so it didn't really matter that it didn't have that giant wad of cotton underneath it where the squonk hole came out, but... Let's see if I'm still in focus here. Oh, perfect. 
Um, so, my method for staggering with 36 and 38 is a simple button. Um, the button with the loop with a hoodie lock. Um, cinch it down, pull it tight, release the tension on the spring and it holds it all the way through. Uh, I've tried Jubster's method. Works very well with 40 gauge. Um, it's inconsistent with 38. Uh, clothespin method, again, works very well with 40. It's inconsistent with 38. And neither of those methods I would suggest for 36. 36 is uh, it's very stiff uh, in comparison to 38 or 40 um it just it doesn't it doesn't work for it nearly as well as it does for 40 um and to be honest for staggering 40 or spacing 40 the only method that works for me is either a clothespin or jupster's method with a clip um i've tried weighted loop with it i've tried my button technique i've tried uh, several different techniques other than parafusing and um, that's the only consistent method I can get to space 40 gauge so if you don't currently use it in your arsenal get comfortable with it um, you know spend a spend a little bit of time figuring it out um, if it's different than what you normally do obviously it's probably not going to be instantly rewarding on the first go uh, for me, I think it took about an hour to finally get it to be repeatable, where I was confident in it every time. Um, Jupster also doesn't discuss during his build how often he changes that tape in his, his clip. Um, so for me, I change that tape every other shot. Um... The idea of the tape is to retain the memory of the spacing of the build when you squeeze it on there. So, um, you might be able to go more than two, but for the sake of just replacing tape, it doesn't make any sense to. It's kind of like when using the, the button technique on multi-core staggered. It takes 15 seconds to replace that little piece of wire. So, I replace it every single time. So that everything stays consistent. Makes life a lot easier when your prep is the same every single time. You want to make sure when you prep your your main shot that you uh, really give it a little extra time in reverse because um, that spacing in between is going to be detrimental to success on this build. Reason being is the tension is so light so you don't collapse everything. Your spacing needs to be consistent. Um, you're not going to be able to cheat and give it a little bit of tension to get them to click in, per se. They just need to simply fall into place.
could probably cheat this with a hand drill or a drill that goes relatively slow. Um, I have since retired a drill altogether because I use a lathe and um, speed control for anybody that uses a lathe knows that um, that initial little creeper speed is not it's not there it's not there even if I switch my um, control box from 24 down to 12 volt it's still not there if you look at it wrong you go from 0 to 300 and uh, you collapse your build and you throw stuff and yep so um, there are guys out there that still use drills and probably would use a drill with this just clicking it along nice and slow for me I just really like the intricacy of this build to be done all by hand Yeah, buddy. Yeah, one second, sweetie. Home with a sick little man today, so I wanted to take the time to uh, capture this for anybody that wanted to see. I know I didn't do a full build, but I mean, in reality, if you're going to attempt a 10 core staggered, you probably know how to. Um, Base your material. I also talked on it anyway, so. Nothing about this build is rushed or fast. Um, you're not going to sit down and slam one of these out in 10 minutes. Um, if you can, you're an absolute legend. But I know for me, uh, this little stick here is going to give me two shots of what I call do mesh um, which is all I need so the extra little bit of time it takes to get it done doesn't matter although we skipped a fuse there I can see it there we go Or the first time I ever seen this build done was by Dwayne, and it was incredible. It's incredible because he didn't just make it a half loop, you know, standard mesh type. He actually made it a three wrap, three wrap coil on like a six mil bit, and I was like, oh my god, that is ridiculous. Well, years later, we gave it a stab. He uses 40, or in that build anyways, he used 40. But for me, I'm not looking to make it an actual coil. It's a pre-built wire shot to replicate a, a piece of mesh. notice on my rotations when I get to the um, the edge of the build I usually kind of slow it down a little bit just to let that wire fall right into where I need it to go the body of the build I mean it it lines up as is anyways but you want to make sure you're catching uh, catching that stagger spacing when it's rotating simply uh, relaxing your hand at that point or putting some 
slack in the wire helps it just kind of fall right in. For build prep for this particular build, um, my core shot was 24 inches. Um, I staggered the whole shot all the way to the swivel, put the drill in reverse, let it backspin a little bit to about 22, 23. Um, you know, wherever it stops, it stops. I'm just putting numbers out there, but. Um, then I cut it in two inch, two inch sections, um, obviously times 10. So um, could you do a longer shot of this? Likely, but I have done everything from a three inch um, 10 core prep to a two and a half to a two and found that a two inch core prep yields the highest success rate for a shot of material. Um, I think that the, the core material is so light, um, or so high in gauge that it kind of starts to just collapse regardless over a length of space. So two inch seems to be the happy, the happy place. Not sure if anybody will find this relatively useful, but hopefully so.